Birds are naughty. They aren't actually naughty, they're just being birds. But if they fly into a jet engine and cause the plane to crash, that's naughty. If the birds come and eat up the crops and cause the farmer to go out of business, that's naughty. For small subsistence farmers, if they can't grow their crops, they can't feed their children and they can't educate them. It's life or death for them. And so we need to keep destructive pest birds away from those kinds of sensitive crops. So we've come up with a way of trying to block the communication between birds. If they can't hear each other, they get annoyed enough that they leave and hold their conversations elsewhere. So we're developing a device which we call a sonic net. And what this device allows us to do is cover a particular area with sound. Uh, where uh, that sound can be anything we want and we choose to put down a bit of sound there that um, keeps the birds from communicating with each other. The devices that we're producing produce sound in a very controlled area. It doesn't leak off to the side, doesn't leak off into the distance. So people don't hear it around and the birds themselves aren't heard. It's benign. It's just within that area they wouldn't be able to hear each other so they move off to somewhere else. Right now we're doing tests in the aviary at William & Mary, which is a large bird cage. And we put the sound on one side of it, um, and then not on the other side of it. And then we keep track of where the birds go and where they eat. And what we're finding is that, as we expected, the birds move away from the sonic net and eat on the other side of the aviary. So following on from the tests that we're doing in our aviary right now, this next phase will be taking the sonic nets and deploying them at farms to see whether this works in more of a realistic situation. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation are funding the sonic net project right now, and their intention is to improve the livelihoods of everyone in the world, especially people in developing nations. Well, it's, I mean, it's an interesting project at William & Mary. What we have is, is a, a professor of biology and a professor of applied science something that neither one of us could do alone. It takes those two um, quite different expertise to come together to solve this problem. We also this year have been working together with the MBA students in the business school um, uh, doing an entrepreneurship field consultancy to explore um, the commercialization opportunities for the technology. Those kinds of opportunities of being able to work across boundaries between the biology, applied science and also the business school are rare. And the university at the scale of William & Mary really enables that because you have high quality research going on but you don't have the institutional silos where a biologist and applied science couldn't work together. Well, I mean, this is pretty typical for William & Mary. We're solving real problems in the real world. We're inviting these wonderful students into our laboratory and we're attacking problems that matter.